Hello. Today we are going to weave such a plate a bowl with an open work top. You can use it in the kitchen for candies, chocolates, cookies, small cakes, whatever. It's rather useful. I've chosen this model because I've been asked to weave something laced like this, as if woven from a willow. For some reason I didn't consider this item before, but since there is a need, why not satisfy it? So today we are weaving an open work topped plate. First of all, a couple of words about unsuccessful experiments. I don't keep them in secret, as you know. At first I thought uh, I would be able to create an open work without a fishing line. However, the first lace was not too smooth, the second one was a total experiment, as I was experimenting with paper, paint and much more. But even though the tubes were more rigid, I didn't succeed in creating a perfect open work. That's why I decided to come back to the technique I had seen from other weavers. Inserting a fishing line into the tubes meant for open work weaving. I'm satisfied with the result much more compared to the previous ones. At first we weave a round bottom. This can be an oriental cherry blossom, which can be seen here. By the way, as for this item, I've only primed it, not varnished it yet. This time I'd like to make a Chinese cross in the center of the bottom, if any of you remember it. For those who have forgotten the way we did, I'll share the link or remind you now. This way, tighten, and based on this cross, start weaving around bottom. Start weaving a bottom. Underneath, lead the upper tube underneath. I explain it from Yubis. up the lead the upper one beneath and here I close the row lead the upper one here and we one more row one two three Four, the upper one here, I've closed the row. After this I weave distributing the tubes of the base. Try to keep the weaving dense. With the rows being close to each other. Lens in the tube and continue. About four or five rows have been woven, after which I insert additional tubes of the base. I 
I divide my normal tube into halves. This will be enough. By the way, there is one more tricky point concerning the way I lance in the tube. Since I will turn the item in order to continue weaving after the bottom, I try to make a joint between the rows as, as usual, but as you know it's not always possible. So In case I fail to make the joint invisible, let it be on top, because afterwards the top will become a bottom. this way. By turning the item I actually meant overturning it like this to continue weaving. Well, you'll see in the process. I've lengthened the tube, so let's continue. Well, there's a transition from row to row here. Let's mark it, otherwise I can pass it unnoticed. This way. I weave around the form. Here it is. I try it on and see that I have to weave a bit more. So I have to distribute the tubes of the base once again and afterwards to add one more additional pole to each interval in order to make the process of weaving easier on double poles. So let's continue. After distributing I press the first row thoroughly. Well, let's help ourselves here a bit as well. This is the process of distributing. Let's weave one more row, making the interval intervals between the tubes of the base identical, after which I'll add new poles. Don't forget that we lengthen the tubes from the top or closer to the top. This way. Like this. And these are those tubes I'm going to weave on. 
Let's reinforce them with one more row, after which I'll start lifting the poles. And continue this way until the end. So, I've inserted additional poles, fastened them with one more row. After this, I compare the bottom to the form and see the size is sufficient. And I tie the weave into the form with the help of such a thin rubber string. It used to be longer, but after it got broken, I've decided to use an additional rubber string, just in case. Well, anyway, the essence is to fasten the bottom to the form. I use this additional rubber string just in case. Well, it's a bit uh, thicker, but better than nothing. This way I fasten it. I straighten the poles. Turn the workpiece the way I find it convenient. And continue weaving, hugging the form about three rows more. Lengthen the tube and continue. Bend the tubes of the base down to the form, trying to avoid gaps at the same time. The next stage of weaving the three rows is in the three tube rope technique. Here I've been weaving a two tube rope. After this, in order to form an open work, it's important to have the weaving more volumetric. That's why I add one more tube and weave a three tube rope. Notice please that I cover this additional tail and lead the working tube onto two poles and under one. Lengthen the tube. So, and continue weaving under two, onto two, under one, onto two, under one. I explain for the beginners. We have to weave three rows of a three tube rope. Now it's time to lengthen. I finish the row in the following way. Well, there are quite a few master classes on row finishing, but let me show you the way I do. I've reached the end of the row. You can see that I have a working tube in front of two poles. Here I need it this way too. So I take this outermost tube, one, two, leading the tubes in a different order, three. That's all, I've closed one row. Now I'm going to lengthen the tube and continue weaving two more rows like this. So three rows of a three tube rope are finished. Now I pass on to printed cotton weave. 
For this purpose I have to get rid of one tube as it would be excess. I've cut it off leaving a tail and I'm hiding it here. Well, I don't feel like taking the weaving off the base, so I'm trying to hide the tail as neatly as I can. So, got it. After this, I continue weaving in a normal printed cotton technique. Let's lengthen the tube now. In order to make the process easier, I'm conducting such a pyramid. So one, two, I put my form here and then a heavy object. So that's all, ready. And weave five or six rows in a normal printed cotton technique instead of a rope. Since we have an even number of tubes of the base, interweave them with two working tubes one after another. Five, six rows will be enough. I've calculated the number of rows experimentally. This is enough in order to form and finish the lace thoroughly. After five rows have already been woven, there are various options possible. I've tried finishing with a 3-tube rope, which is probably correct. This way you'll fasten the new tubes of the base you're going to add for lace weaving. However, a few times I've just cut the excess poles off and added the new tubes after the printed cotton weave. But to my mind it is neater to lengthen the tube and weave two or three rows in a three tube rope technique. Before weaving the final fastening rows. Anyway, you have to insert new poles to fasten at this stage. I cut off the remaining tails and insert the new poles with a fishing line inside. So I insert the tubes this way and weave a couple more rows of a three tube rope for the matter of fastening. Now a couple of words regarding what I insert into tubes. I've got everything prepared already. Well, at first the process seemed too laborious to me. However, it turned out less difficult than I had thought it would be. It only takes about two minutes or so. I insert this fishing line into the tubes already coated. In this case, my fishing line is uh, 0 0.7 mm thick. My husband has shared his reserves with me. As you can see, it fits in quite easily, even into the coated tubes. Well, I've had a different idea from other weavers. If I'm not mistaken, it was Olga Lagoda who said that she inserted a fishing line into the tubes in advance before coating them. But in my case it is quite fine the way I do. 
The only thing I'd like to add is that for this particular plate woven from thicker tubes, I've used a thicker fishing line. If I remember it right, the salesman told me it was 1.2 mm thick. You see, my question has led me as far as the bait store. So, I insert a fishing line and as soon as I've done, I try to do it like this and shape the tubes. I've already prepared these ones a little and insert the tubes. Cut off the old poles and fasten the new ones with the help of glue. I insert the new poles close to the old ones. I've cut off the old tubes, inserted the new ones and glued them. After which I'll weave two more rows of a three tube rope. As well as the previous time I add one extra tube and neatly weave a three tube rope. Two rows will be enough to fasten the weaving finalization. So, the final stage. I've already hidden one working tube, let's hide the rest. I've already shown the way I do, but I'll repeat it. I have to hide all the three working tubes. Moreover, I have to do it very neatly, otherwise they will spoil the view. So I've hidden the tube. Well, it would be easier to take the weaving off the foam, but so far I don't. Now uh, you'll understand why. The next stage is forming the lace. The most interesting point for the sake of which the masterclass has been shot. So here we face my favorite point, options. There can be various options. The first option is leading the tubes like this. I'll show you now. I don't take the weaving of the foam, I've only taken it of the pyramid. I've also gotten accustomed to use some kind of a round object to make the lace smooth. Now I'm going to show you one more option, well, after which I'll tell you what other options I've tried. I'll lead the tubes behind the next pole. And it is where I have to lead the tubes forming the lace. However, here the options are possible too. I can either lead them here or do without tucking them in, but just leave them like this. It is what I'm going to do this time. Instead, I'm going to tie the tubes in as low as here. I've prepared the gaps with the help of a stick I use in root weaving. This object, in my case it's a nail polish, helps me form a nice looking lace. This way, zap, continue, lead here. Well, let's do it here. It must be easier clockwise. 
also lead the tube behind the next pole. Prepare a gap. At first I thought it's not worth the effort, but then I've tried and it fits in quite well. The fishing line makes the tubes quite elastic. This way. Zap. Lead the tube behind the next one. Prepare a gap here. And the tube goes inside effortlessly. The main thing is to check the way it lays. Afterwards, if anything goes wrong, we will be able to smoothen it later. Zap. Prepare the gap. Let the tube and pull it tighter. Don't pull too violently because the poles are only fastened with two rows. Well, there is some glue, but it's better not to overdo. I haven't taken the weaving off the foam because I continue shaping the lace. Not only with the help of uh, this small nail polish bottom, bottle, but also pressing it close to the foam. That's why I've told you that the foam will still be useful. This will make the plate smoother, it will repeat the shape of the base. This way, sometimes the fishing line sticks out and interferes, but we can cope with it. This way. So, So, lead the final coil behind the next pole, like this. And in the same way, prepare a gap. Pull according to the form. Lead one tube through it first. So, tighten the tubes once again. Let's look at what we've got. Check. It looks like this loop is a bit smaller, smooth, and if something looks doubtful, turn the work over and the final stage. Well, I propose you one of the options, but you can consider various ones. I propose you to hide the tubes to make the tails invisible. I lead it behind the first pole, in front of the second one, and hide the tail behind the third one. Well, let's pull it a bit tighter like this and cut it off. You can drop some glue, but I've concluded that you can do without it. Well, you have to leave some spare room in the first loop, as you'll need it for hiding the tail under it. So, behind the second one, in front of the third one, and hide.
The height of the work must, mustn't be more than five rows of the basic pattern. In this case, the tails are long enough for hiding. Well, I could weave more, but based on the length of my tubes, I've calculated that five rows of the basic pattern are just enough to finish the work neatly and make such an edging. Once again, behind, in front, and hide. And continue this way until the very end. As you can see, we are getting such a nice looking edge, which will hide our previous rows and will be used as a foundation for the plate to stand on. Finish following the pattern. under one, onto the next one and hide here. I cut the tail off, glue it and tuck it in like this. One, two, got it? And let's glue this tail as well. Well, this tail is a bit too short. The matter is, before I c came the idea of five rows, uh, sometimes my tails had been too short for finishing and I had to lengthen them. Well, but that's what experiments are meant for. So, finally I found out how to finish the work neatly like this. Take a look at what we've got. Most of all I like the way it looks from this side. Now let's discuss the options. So which op options are possible? First of all, you decide for yourself how high the lace should be. You then have to use a nail polish bottle. You can use a thick marker or even a pen and form loops around it. The main task is to get a smooth roundish form. What else? You can lead the tube behind the next one and out here as well. But here I have the tubes in front of the next one, do you see? Well, it seems to look rather nice this way too. The next options. Well, here I've got quite a few unusual experiments. I'd like to show you this work. I've led the tube behind two next ones and led it out after this. I had smaller intervals between the poles here. That's why I've decided to try it this way. The tubes were long enough both to finish with the lace neatly here and lead the tail behind two poles. That's why I've decided to experiment like this as well. And also please notice that these plates are two colored. This option seems interesting to me too. You can make the work single colored or two colored. These works have only been primed. They are firm already and they are a bit glossy because the primer has such an effect. Today I'm going to coat them with varnish which will make them matte. This one is still a bit soft but l that's understandable. Our foreign followers on the English and Spanish channels have asked us to shoot a masterclass devoted to weaving a cup. 
So this is going to be our next video.